bought a new tool yesterday. Woohoo! A hefty bowl gouge. Had a $20 off coupon at Rockler and thought I'd get this bad boy. So I thought I'd take you through how I do my initial sharpening and setting up and then give it a try out on my newest project. All right, let's do it. So this is part of my Tormek system here for sharpening wood turning tools mainly. Getting to choose the distance from the jig that you want to sharpen it at and it gives you a different grind depending on where you set it. I like a fingernail grind and so that is the longer one and that's where I set it. These will give you a consistent distance from the grinding stone. And in this case, I am going to go for the A, that is. Yes, I'm trying to avoid saying A hole. This is a wet stone system, so excuse me while I go get some water. When you haven't used it for a while, it gets very dry, so I have to add water and add water and add water for a little bit until it stops, the level stops dropping. One of the nicer features about this system is this stone is capable of two grits, and you adjust it using this truing stone. It has a rough side and a smooth side. And I'm going to start out with the rougher side. Try to get... That's noisy. <laughs> try to get the uh, overall grind right before I try smoothing it out. Should be a good start. Okay, now you slip this over this arm here and you start working it. This is going to take a while. This is not a great system for reshaping tools, but the first time you use a tool, that's just what you got to do. Thankfully, it doesn't look like it's going to be that bad. It's already fairly close to what I want my final product to be anyway. And if you look closely, you can see where it's grinding on it. So I need to get all the way up to the tip. That's what's going to take the most time. This one's already almost up there. So, here we go. Working. Okay. 
as you can see, we've reached the tip. Now, we're going to change. We'll add a little more water. And, uh, oh. and we're going to change the grit of this stone by using the smooth side. My stone could use a little truing up. Yeah, this is mainly going to hit the edges <clears throat> and until I take the time to true up the stone I'm going to just take advantage of that the rough parts are in the middle and the smoother parts are on the edges so do the reshaping in the middle and then I'll try to smooth it out on the edges of the stone that is of course this takes about a minute is not something I really want to do all the time, but it's certainly easier than changing the stone up and more less expensive too, more economical. Now with the stone rough, it gives it about oh the same texture you'd get from an 80 grit wheel maybe, something like that, or maybe even a CBN stone on a regular slow grinder. When we're done with this, it's going to have a mirror finish and be very sharp. Alright, that ought to do it. I just do the same thing again, but now on the smoother side. Right away you can hear the difference. I'm going to work on one half of it for a minute, and I'll start doing the other half. But in the meantime, I'll show you what the difference is. Here we go. There's the rough side. And if you flip it over, that is the smoother side. I'm going to work it a little bit more. It'll have a mirror finish almost completely across it. But you can see the difference for sure. Mainly, really, though, you only need the mirror finish to go up toward uh, touching the edge. That's the working side. The working part of the tool. Those other minor scratches will work their way out over, over time as I repeat this sharpening procedure. Any future sharpenings will be much, much quicker. I just use that little jig to set it up at the right length and uh, rest a certain distance from the wheel, about a minute or less for subsequent sharpenings. It removes very little material so your tools last a longer time. I really do like this system. Slow grinder is perfectly acceptable for 90% of what you want to do, but for real, <laughs> real fun when you get this thing sharpened, it just, the chips will fly. Okay, I think I got this mirror finish all the way up to the edge, all around. Next step will be for stropping it. The side of the tool is a leather strop. Got this round one here too for the inside. Take the burr off of it. And that stropping compound will spread itself out more even as you apply the tool to it. Again, I'm, I'm going a little overboard from my normal day-to-day -day sharpening routine since this is the first time this particular tool has been sharpened. It just takes a little longer. Okay. Now you can see when I rub this on here, it's catching little fibers. That's the burr. Get rid of the burr. Take it out of the jig. Use this curved section, the rounded over section. Make sure you get it all the way up to the tip. 
Not too much on that one, any any time, because it will damage the edge a little bit. Oh yeah, that's right. One last little tip, if you burnish the back of the tool on the strapping wheel, it'll slide just a little bit better. You could also do this with, say, a scotch Bright pad or something like that. And I do recommend it. Anything to help the tool slide a little more easily will make your cuts just that much smoother. I know we need to go more than an inch or two for the most part. Can't really see much. But you can certainly feel the difference. Well, there it is, my new tool. Lovely and sharp. Now, while we're here at the machine, let's do it again. Just a general sharpening, not, not this one, my other one. And you can see how quickly it goes. This is my 10 millimeter bowl gouge, the one I use most, uh, have been using all along. I use the same settings on this one as I do on the big one. Okay, same thing as before. I put my tool in the jig. Use this thing to set the distance from the edge to the tip, 75 millimeters. Flip that around. Get the wheel distance set from the tool rest. Here we go. Raise the water, turn it on. This one, all I need is the smooth area because it is already shaped how I want it. Little fresh compound. And that's it. Subsequent sharpenings are much easier than the initial sharpening. And next time I sharpen the large one, that is exactly what I will do with it. More or less. There's a little bit more on the inside there. There we go. Right, let's give that new tool a try. This isn't really the best tool for this small project. It's a rather large gouge. Where I think it's going to really shine is the larger bowl blanks, roughing out the outside shape and hollowing out larger portions of the inside, and then I can switch over to a, uh, a smaller gouge or other tool to smooth out after I use this one but I just had to try it just had to try it it is quite sharp and it seems to be cutting well though so yeah, thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it